Hello everyone, my name is Jay, this is Whiplash Engine and Machine, and welcome to my machine shop. For today I have a little project I'm going to try and walk us through, it is I have this pressure plate assembly that the customer would like fitted to this flywheel. So for this one to fit, I'm going to have to drill and tap six new holes into this flywheel. No big deal. And I'm going to show you the way I go about doing it. So first thing that I like doing on getting on these is uh, I like making sure there's no offsets. And if there is an offset, I need to find it, I need to record it. So I'll come around and I'll measure the inside of all the holes just to make sure there's no offsets. So I come around here, I find these things are only a few thou apart. Here and there, they bounce all over the place. There's no rhythm, rhyme, or reason. So that tells me they're all supposed to be in the same spot. Another thing I'll do, I'll, come, I'll check all the diameters of the holes. Because if the diameters are different, you're going to get different measurements, you're going to get incorrect math, and it's going to upset yourself. So these ones are all pretty much the same. Now I'm going to start drawing my blueprint. I got this lid here from uh, some takeout dinner. This thing makes a pretty good round circle there. Uh, I got six bolt holes that I need to do. So I'm going to lay it out like this. So I'm going to draw in six circles here. Here's the center of my flywheel. Uh, I hope that makes sense and this represents the whole circle that we need to drill. So now is what I'm going to do is I'd like to know the center of, of these holes right now. So to get that information I'm going to go from the inside of one hole to the inside of the next hole. Uh, basically this edge to this edge. Does that show up on the camera? And that shows up on the camera. Perfect. So that measurement there is a 10.513. So let's uh, write that down. Oh, how do I want to do this? 10.513. Do it on the bottom. Uh, now, I've gone around, I've made sure all my bolt holes are the same diameter, and they're a 0.340. So the bolt hole diameter is 0.34. I'm going to add that to this number here. Uh, it's going to be a 3, 5, 8, 10. Uh, so that distance here is going to be from the center of the holes and that's going to be the diameter of, of my uh, bolt circle. Now I want to divide this by 2 so I can work with the radius. 10.853 divided by 2 equals 5.4265 Five. I'm not really interested in working with tents on this project as it could have been laid out by hand and drilled on my drill press. Uh, so I'm going to round that up to seven. So 427 thou. Uh, and now this is the radius. This is going from the center of my workpiece to the center of the bolt hole circle. Uh, and that tells me that all these are going to be the same. So from here to there, from here to here, here to here, you know, they're all going to be equal. Uh, I also would like to draw a 90 degree line here from my center line. Now this has given me a right angle triangle. So I know that this number here is my radius.
this this number here of my radius that's also the hypotenuse of my right angle triangle so I need to figure out my x-axis and my y-axis so far the only information I have is my radius or my hypotenuse but if I take my 360 degree circle and divide this by the number of bolt holes I need which is 6 that's going to give me 60 so 360 divided by 6 equals 60 degrees so right here this angle is 60 degrees I sure hope this shows up on the camera uh, so with that we're going to use the sine function on my calculator so if you sine your angle 60 degrees sine and multiply that by the hypotenuse which is 5.5 four two seven this is going to give you the distance of your side opposite and by side opposite I mean side opposite of the angle you just worked with so this edge here would be your side adjacent again this is how your hypotenuse this is my side opposite so 60 degree sine multiplied by my hypotenuse is going to give me my side opposite so I get a 4.69999 blah 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 I'm going to round that off to uh, 4.7 so 4.7 is now my side opposite. So there's different functions. We could use this information to gather the side uh, adjacent here. But we're just going to continue with our sine function. And to do that, I'm going to take my 90 degrees. I'm going to subtract this already known angle. And that's going to give me 30. That's going to give me the value of this angle here. So this angle here, we now know is 30 degrees. So we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to do 30 degrees sine. We're going to multiply that by our hypotenuse, 5.427. And again, that's going to give us our side opposite. Once again, side opposite of our angle. So that is going to be 2.4. 7135, we're going to round that off to 2.714. So now I know how far to travel x and then y to get there. So this hole here, uh, this would be x minus 2.714. And it would be y plus 4.7. So if I go to these coordinates, that's going to bring me over and up to this hole. Now to get to this hole location, uh, is all I got to do is I just got to change the value of my x here. I just got to turn that into a positive. We'll go here. Uh, and then you want to get to this. We'll keep the x positive. We'll change the value of the y, y negative. And then we go back to y negative x negative um, these ones here work off the center line and the radius so these ones we don't really have any figuring out other than dividing the diameter by two so with our measurements known we know the center of this hole the center of this hole that's that's our math anyways so what you can do is you can set your vernier up to this center line which is a 10.853 10.853. If you uh, line the edge of your jaw on one end, or one side of the circle, it should line up on the outside of the other side. And that's going to tell you that your center is good. You can eyeball it by the center, but you're eyeballing it. And even though it's probably going to be close enough, I, I like to go from one edge to the other edge, because the edges, they're not going anywhere. You don't have to eyeball them. You can see if it lines up on the edge or not. That was the easy one. We got that math correct. But now we want to check out our, uh, our scary old trig measurements here. So for this one here, we, we moved x 2.714. Uh, so we, we know what half, half this distance is. This distance here would be the chord. So if we take our 2.74... 2.714 multiply that by 2 that gives me a 
So I take my vernier again, 5.4 to 8. If I go from the edge of this hole inside, it should go to the outside edge of that hole. And I can see that's what they do. So I know if I was in the center of this hole, it'd be in the center of that hole. We could also do the same for this distance here. This value is 4.7. We could multiply that by 2. That would give us uh, 9.4. That's 9.4. I go from the inside edge, I get to the outside edge. And uh, it'll work like that all the way around. And if it doesn't, something happened somewhere. You did something wrong, blah, blah, blah. Go back, figure it out. So that's just a quick way just to double check your work. All right, so now that we're all set up, dialed up, readouts at zero, I got my print, camera's turned on, I have my center drill. Let's get uh, center drilling. So, I remove my dial, install my come down a little bit. Now, I'm going to go to the first, uh, we're going to run across here, we're going to go to our first radius. So, the first radius was a 5.427. Five point four two seven. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put a little dimple there, just a little one. I'm gonna go all the way to the opposing side now. Do another little dimple. And then, according to our print, we need to go to uh, x two point seven one four and uh, y. 4.7 All right, so now that we're ready to uh, drill and tap our hole Let's figure out what size we need to drill. So I'm going to drill and tap this for a 5 16 18. Here's my tap right here. So 5 16 by 18. That's the size I want. So if you don't have a tap drill chart available to tell you what size to drill your hole, this is, uh, this is how you do it. Uh, anyways, our formula is going to be big D minus 1 over P. Now is what this works out to is this is our diameter and this is our pitch. Our pitch is 18. So we need to write this out different. Big D is 5 16. So we kind of need a decimal point on this. So if we take 5, divide that by 16, that's our decimal point. So we now have 0 0.3125 subtract 1 over 18. So, so now let's do our uh, our division first. So 1 divided by 18 equals uh, 0 0.0555 continuous. We're going to go uh, 0 0.056. So now we have 0 0.3125 subtract 0 0.05 six. So 0.3125 minus 0 0.056 is a 0.256. That looks like a 2 to me. 0.256. So uh, that's the diameter top drill we're going to go look for. Uh, six dial above quarter inch uh, will probably work uh, good enough. Let's hit the drill index and see what I got. So I went and checked my index. Uh, that's the uh, size we came up with for our drill math there. Uh, I came out to an F drill. I have an F drill, it's in good shape. We're gonna run the F drill. I'm gonna set my uh, power quill here to six dial per revolution of feed. And uh, I'm gonna drill this hole.
now that my holes are drilled, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna tap these with uh, my 5 16 by 18 tap. So I'm gonna run this in the chuck. I'm gonna reduce my speed. I'm gonna grab a little bit of cutting lube here. I got my hand on my switch. So I'm back on the workbench. I got my six holes drilled and tapped. Now, I have this chamfer tool. I like to run these in my little hand drill. I just go around and I'll give them a little chamfer. Makes them look good. if we can see that in the video or not but then I'm gonna take uh, my assembly here and I'm gonna see how good all my holes line up and they line up perfect uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, maneuver the camera around That project went good. I uh, hope you guys learned a little bit from it. And those guys who already know, hope you had fun watching. And for all the guys that know other ways and maybe even better ways, I mean, keep on making chips. Thanks, guys.